They're calling this the Joe Woods revenge game. <laughs> all over. Not at all. Not at all. Man, I, you know, I have fond memories of uh, Cleveland for a couple of years. Uh, my family still lives up there. But uh, I love Kevin. Um, have great respect for him. Uh, view him as a friend. You know, it was unfortunate what happened there, but that's just the nature of football. But it, I, I'm definitely not looking at it as a revenge game. It's just, just the next game. Do you get a little excited about just knowing it's I mean, with so many friends on that side? Uh, oh, yeah, definitely, man. Just a chance to see some of the players I coach. Some of the guys are still on staff there. So look forward to that. But it's, it's just the next game. Joe, uh, you know, energy was the biggest word of the week last week. Like, mm -hmm. There's a lot of energy, yeah. renewed energy, carried over to the game. What what tangible do you think will go beyond just just that? Like, what, what are some tangible things you guys changed last week that, that you think can have a lasting impact? I think uh, Riz did a great job. I think we changed things up just in terms of how we prepare, from the meeting schedules to the time. You know, had a lot more meeting time. Um, just the way we practice, there's some time in between periods to do more technique work, things of that nature. And I just think the energy he brings to the team, just in terms of the motivation. But I think that whole schedule, some things he changed about the times we meet, I think it all just worked in favor of the players. And they, they felt more energized, they looked more energized, and it, it, it showed in the fourth quarter of the game. Where did the idea of, of like sort of the D-line rotation, like having those guys stay for whatever it was, five, six snaps, and then before rotate, like it, where did that generate? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't Really, I don't pay any attention to that. Yeah. I mean, they're always in the rotation. I don't know if it's been any different. Um, but that's the biggest thing is we always want to rotate our defensive line so that way we're you know fresh in the fourth quarter and we had a couple big plays by our D line that, that really helped us. And was there anything that you can point on point to for you know three sacks obviously forced interception a anything that brought that back to the defense? I just think guys doing their job yeah. and I say we just tried to streamline some of the things we want those guys to feel confident and uh, play fast and I think the biggest thing was the energy I know uh, Double D called all the guys up. Because we've gone, and I told you guys, you know, we've been in the lead or it's been a one-score game going into the fourth quarter. And the whole difference in all those games is we made two or three plays that we didn't make in the other games or our record would be flipped. So we just happened to make it, and I was thinking uh, credit to the guys. How do you feel like you did in your first you know, play college for the first time since you're leaving? How, yeah, how was that? It was good, man. You want to get into that groove early on, so you're always a little bit nervous. Just kind of what you want to call and what what they're going to do, but uh, after a while, I managed to feel like I settled in, got a feel for what was going on with them, to the feel what was going on for us, and really tried to adjust the calls throughout the game. What are some of the challenges uh, of James this week? I got to for me. You know, you know James is a big quarterback. I mean, he got a strong arm. He can make all the throws, and I really went back and watched the games. And he's playing really well. Um, I, I saw him make some incredible throws. You know, he left a, a couple out there. But for the most part, man, he, he did a nice job. So I'm sure, you know, I don't know how he feels about us, but I'm sure he's going to be ready to go for this game. When you're facing James, it's always uh, usually the most exciting kind of game, for better or for worse. How much do you think the TV's are trying to get to get after? Yeah, it's, it's the next guy. I mean, I mean, the biggest thing for us is just putting ourselves in position to make plays on the ball. So I really focus on those guys being the proper, playing the proper technique, being in the proper position. So if opportunity does arise, that they can make that play. So, you know, he's the next guy we face. So hopefully he gives us a couple opportunities. I feel like Alante did this last game. He, uh, he was up and down. Obviously he had his struggles. Um, it was good to see him finish the game. Um, you know, and every year you're going to have a game or two that you, ah, it didn't go your way. Um, but I think the growth from him was on the sideline. How he dealt with the issues, we talked him through. Uh, he talked to some of the veteran guys, you know, got his head together and went back out and, and did some good things. But I definitely want more consistency out of him. Obviously, eliminate the penalties and eliminate the big plays. How do you notice, like, that difference on the sideline? Is it he's just not yelling as much? You're not as animated? Like, well, what, what, what does he do differently that you notice that that guy's like? Yeah. yeah, it's just like if you're upset, somebody's going to know. So it's just one of the things you know. And the thing is, you got to, you know, playing football, you got to let it go. You know, everything's not going to go your way, but you can't let that play affect the next play. And that was really what I was trying to get him just to calm down, go back out, and just rely on technique. Is there almost some, like, I don't know if Russ is the right word, but like, because he had been inside for so long, like now, like the season when he's on the outside, like, is, is there any, is there like, are you seeing that transition differently it's, it's a little bit different out there. Like you said, if you're inside, you got space on both sides, but outside, you know what you're dealing with. You're dealing more of the vertical concepts, 
different type of route trees. And he's he, he he's fine. He can do it. Yeah, he just got to really wire into the technique and the details. Jay said your family's still in Cleveland. What are, they, what are their thoughts about this game? They're coming. <laughs> yeah, they're coming. They'll be on a the flight. So. Yeah, from a from confidence perspective, you know, obviously there's been games where the defense has been on the field at the end of the game, couldn't close it out. Obviously, you don't want to have like four possessions there yeah. that you have to defend. But just being able to do that and finish off a game, how how much confidence is that building? I really, I felt confident. It's one of those deals in the game. You're like, oh, can't say that word. Or, you know, you just say, all right, we got this. And it was a, like a different feeling. I just felt like this, the energy from the guys. And I felt like they knew we had to make a stop. And really, the last three series of the fourth quarter, because we talked about how we start the game, how we finish the game. And um, I think we started with two punts, no points in the first quarter. And then we last three drives, we uh, got off, and they had no points in the fourth. So that was one of our keys. The guys executed it. But I, I felt there was different confidence going into that last drive. Do you think it could kind of help some of the guys who played with Jameis practice against him over the years, and now obviously they're on the team that will be going against him. Do you think the fact that maybe they know some of his tendencies or that they're so familiar with him, do you think that could play a benefit for y'all on, on the Sunday? I'm sure they're talking about it. There's no question. You know, they know him, but, you know, he knows us too. So we've talked about it. So I'm sure there's things he's going to be looking for and things that we may do a little bit differently. He's uh, slowly ramping up uh, Nick Chubb. Yeah. Great, great guy. You know, I was there with him. I still haven't heard him talk. I was there three years. But he don't say nothing. He's a grinder. And he's one of those backs where, you know, it's two yards, four yards, five yards, two yards. Boom, he hits a 20 or 30 yarder. Um, he really runs behind his, pa behind his pads. Um, I see the quickness in his movement, you know, watching him run. So I feel like he's all the way back. They're probably easing him into it. But um, he's a really good back. Man, we're going to have our hands full with him. Joe, Tyron, Tyron mentioned on that interception, he was kind of reading a key, a late dig route that he had noticed that Kirk likes to go to, and he almost had one in the first half, too. Like, how often is he bringing stuff like that to the table it's just, it, from his own experience? He, he's just unbelievable. I mean, his whole career, he's been a you know eight instinct type player. And we show some plays over and over and over again. And this for that one play made the difference. Like, you never know. You know, there's a couple things we showed him, but as a post player, he processed all that information from the initial read to what the route was going to be. He just took a shot and made the play, man. But that's what makes him special. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, 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 All right, guys.